especially on the heels of the Charlotte Invitational, where BBD was, I believe, 10-0-06 or something along those lines. You know, he was 9-0 in this event, I believe, and you can start to feel it, right? Like, you've been there before. Oh, yeah. Where you've had a very good start in a long tournament. You start picking up some losses. It reminds you of previous events, and uh, suddenly you're, you're stressing where you thought that this would be another easy breeze to the elimination rounds. All right, so we're on game three. Noah is going to be on the play this game. He is playing the four-color Delver deck. This is the one, this seems to be in the style of the Eric Rill Delver decks. Yeah, this is a, a four-color list with Young Pyromancer, which is something that Eric Rill is a big fan of. Uh, plays four main deck stifles, a fire ice. This is very similar to, to Eric Rill's list, in fact. All right, well, this should figure to still be a good matchup for Brian. We'll see how it plays out. Turn one, Noah. Cats a ponder. He does have a lot of action in his hand set up. And we'll see how Brian responds. He has at least a pyroblast, but he's going to lead off just on basic island. I think this matchup is slightly better for uh, the four color Delver deck than, say, the rug matchup is because there's just more power in the four color list. Yeah. Noah's going to go ahead and try to resolve a turn two young pyromancer. We'll see if that works. Brian is brainstorming in response to it, maybe seeing if he can find. He doesn't really have a counter. I don't believe he has a counter spell for it. I don't know if he wants. Don't think he wants to to force it. Well, he might have to. Uh, you know, I, I, this this card's very threatening for Brian to, to play against. It is quickly lethal by itself. It almost forces a terminus. It's also something that can overpower and treat the angels, which is not true of something like Tarmogoyf. Yeah, see where he goes, where he goes from here. He has Stoneforge Mystic, Counterbalance, Spell Pierce, Pyroblast. A lot of tools available, but Young Pyromancer definitely a threat. And Noah with days in hand, so if Brian commits a critical two-mana card this turn and can't fight over this days, it is big trouble. And we will see just that happen. Brian's going to try to make Stoneforge Mystic, but it'll be dazed. That makes an elemental, picks up a land for Noah, and it's just going to get countered. And Brian already in a bad spot here. Yeah, and this is what... Uh, Young Pyromancer is a unique threat not all of the Delver decks, of course, bring this to the table, but this is a card that forces now forces Terminus. Source of Plowshares is not enough to get him out of this if Noah has any number of spells next turn. And Treat the Angels cannot block this board. And so Brian's in a tough spot. This is something distinct about this card that things like Tarmogoyf simply cannot do. Now, I'm wondering whether or not Brian knows that his opponent's on the four-color version. He has a Rest in Peace in his hand that he has boarded in. That's traditionally good against Rug Delver decks, but I imagine not great against what Noah Walker is doing. No, I mean, four Deathrite Shamans is the only threat that is impacted by this. The rest of his creature base is Delver Secrets, Young Pyromancer, and two copies of True Name Nemesis. So uh, I don't know how the first two games have gone, obviously, but I think that uh, certainly against this board, Rest in Peace is not something that, that Brian has much interest in. Yeah, Brian just draws for the turn. He's going to need to try to set up a Terminus, as you mentioned. That's, that's the sweeper of choice. I think if he can find one, he does have the ability to protect it with both a Red Blast and a Spell Pierce. So if he gets the appropriate mana, he'll definitely be able to fight that fight. But getting there is another thing altogether. Going to play Volcanic Island and now Rest in Peace will come out. This does do a little work against Deathrite Shaman, so uh, it's not a total loss for Brian. But uh, with Noah's board the way it is, even just a one-two attacker is totally fine. Yeah, and Noah's going to continue to develop his board. This is an end step brainstorm, making an yet another 1-1. One, one. And the really tough thing about this is, you know, it's so tough for Brian to initiate action because any time Noah gets to play a counterspell, it's another trigger off the Young Pyromancer. So uh, Brian's up against the wall a little bit to begin with, and he has to be very concerned anytime he casts anything because there's the possibility of it just getting countered and Noah getting a 1-1 one, one for his troubles. So no, he went ahead and red blasted the brainstorm. So no, didn't get to draw cards there. But on the untap, Noah's going to cast Ponder, making a third elemental token. And he find, we're finding Daze and I believe Fire Ice on top of the deck. It looks like he's just going to have more fuel. And post Ponder makes another land, and he's going to be able to crash for five damage this turn, sending Brian down to eleven. See another land drawn for Brian, so no help yet. Really is Terminus that he's going to need. He's going to need to get a Terminus fast and then win the counter or over it. But I'm a little worried that even if Brian finds the Terminus, he's gonna, he'll have taken too much damage. You see Noah, he's sitting on another young Pyromancer as backup. He can reassemble this board. Yeah, this board really only was a young Pyromancer. Yeah, the, yeah it's, 
you know, whether or not you want to play this card or Tarmogoyf, you know, usually those, those are the two things you're considering. Uh, sometimes they seem kind of interchangeable. This is one matchup where it is not. I see here a counterbalance for Brian. A swing for five from Noah that puts Brian down to six. And he'll just pass the turn. He's sitting on some counter magic. He has a, a Pyroblast, a Daze. Looks like he got a Golgari charm. What a, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of colors going on. But he can actually cast them all. Golgari Charm is a bit of an odd duck, but there are enchantments in Brian's list, and you know you can also respect the possibility of Supreme Verge here as well. No utility against Terminus, but it feels like there's enough stuff going on here where it's helpful. We'll see what Brian does here. Did not find the sweeper he needed. You can't realistically go to one and expect to win from that. I think he's debating about whether or not he should brainstorm now, trying to find action. I, you know, is Supreme Verdict in his list, for example? He or do not believe he has one. Or does he need to save the brainstorm for Noah's turn and hope that the top card of his deck is exactly Terminus? Neither particularly appealing options. He's going to went for the main phase brainstorm to find action. And I don't believe he found the terminus anyway. So that and keep in mind, even if Noah's spells get countered from the counterbalance trigger, they're still generating one one tokens. Now, well, correction on life total Brian at five. So this is a lethal. Yeah, the, the creatures are swinging for six, not for five. So it's a lethal swing that Noah has next turn. And it looks to be pretty tough here for Brian. I, I don't see a way out. He does have counterbalance assembled, but Noah able to stick that young Pyromancer just really went the distance. Yeah. So potent against a deck like Brian's. Especially backed by counter magic. I mean, that's just a very tough recipe. Yeah, puts, puts two back. We'll see where he goes here. And I'm wondering if he can serve, if he's going to be able to survive to the next turn. I'm, I'm well, not if, convinced he can. It, he does he have a, he has a okay. So he has again. Brian is setting up the possibility next turn he can shuffle his deck, just activate his divining top and hope that the top card is terminus. Yeah, an interesting thing will be whether or not he decides to spin the top first. It will take away a mana, so he'll be able to play around less. However, it does greatly increase the chance he finds a terminus. Yeah. As we know, that means Brian will be going to at, at most four. He's still in danger of being burned out, even if everything goes according to plan. Yeah, and I think that, that Noah here needs to consider casting some spell here at the end of the turn. Probably the Golgari charm on anything, uh, just so he doesn't fail to produce lethal if Brian has one removal spell. Because right now, if, if Brian has a source to plowshares, if Noah just untaps and attacks, Brian does get to go to next turn. Although now that's not the case because the, the fetch line is getting cracked. Brian's at four, so Noah doesn't need that creature anymore. So now Noah is not forced to initiate the action. He can simply untap and attack. Yeah, force Brian first to have the Terminus. Looks like Brian will be able to spin top and play Terminus and be able to pay for days. So if he, if he can find the Terminus, I think he's going to get to do it. Like, but, the, you know, that's only the beginning if right. he manages to find that. That is step one of clawing back into this. And there's another young Pyromancer in Noah's hand to reassemble. Here he goes here. So we pass on to. I believe we're still on Brian's turn. He's going to go ahead and spin top, leaving up both duels. And it's really just Terminus or Bust. And I Looks like a, it's just a plow up there. I don't think there's a Terminus. Yeah, that's not going to be good enough. And now with that fetch land cracked, one source of plowshares is not enough. And there you have it, Noah Walker, 2-1, defeats Brian Brondewin. Noah moves to 9, to 10, 2, and 1, still in. Brian, after a 9-0 start, has fallen a little bit. He now has three losses and a draw. Mace